given the current business environment and situation mm -hmm. in the United States, do you see still the increasing demand for Indonesian people applying for this particular visa coming to the States? Erwin, that's, you know, that's a very good question. There is. There's a lot of demand, in, and not only in Indonesia, but throughout the entire world, mm -hmm. to come to the United States and to do it legally. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, legal immigration, immigration. And, and there's a strong distinction. We're hearing the, the comments from the current president of the United mm -hmm. States. His focus is on illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. EB-5 is a legal or a, what I call a front door immigration policy. It allows foreign nationals to come in and to do it the correct way. They make an investment. There's a face-to-face -face interview with a consulate officer. There's also the, the fact that they do a background check. There's also a health check. And it's a front door immigration policy, and it's a way that people can do it the legal way. Mm -hmm. And the demand for the United States to be a destination is, is ever increasing. There's a lot of stability, regardless of what uh, you may hear coming out of Washington, D.C. Uh, the United States is still the destination of choice. The hot news of economic slowdown and so forth doesn't impact a lot on the interests of the Indonesian people applying for this particular visa, I believe. That's right, yeah. and, and uh, the United States is open for business, and uh, we remain to be so, and, and the economy in the United States has really is been chugging along since the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. It has uh, continued to grow. As from 1990 till the current day, we have seen a tripling in the size of the U.S. economy. So it's, it's, a, strong, it's a strong place to open business. Mm -hmm. It's a strong place to invest for those EB-5 investors. And when they do that through organizations like CMB, we've been successful mm -hmm. for uh, more than 4,700 families have invested through CMB for their EB-5 goals. And uh, we've continued to be able to achieve those goals for those families who have trusted us with their EB-5 dreams. I see. Bernard, how... Well informed, do you think, Indonesian people? You happen to be the partner of Bern and Dural right. regarding this uh, EB-5 visa processing. Is it right that it's a bit complicated? The complexity that we have to understand about acquiring this particular visa, EB-5. Yeah, actually, uh, before even EB, uh, going to the EB-5, applying the visa for, let's say, a working permit in the United States itself, it's not only complicated, but also it's very limited. Mm -hmm. Like the other type of visa, maybe uh, there are 240,000 mm -hmm. ap applicants, but only 80,000 mm -hmm. accept. Even my friend who study in the United States, after that they want to continue working a while, maybe for two or three years, right? And the competition, of course, with the other country. Trust me, sounds familiar to me. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of situation, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, uh, if you apply like H1B visa, of course, uh, mm -hmm. the, it's different, right? For EB-5, you need, you, mm -hmm. you're doing the investments, mm -hmm. right? You invest the money, but for H1B, uh, you, you should be very talented to be approved. Mm -hmm. Even the company that you want to work with should be really want to hire you. Mm -hmm. So the chance is really, is really a small actually, hmm. but for EB-5, I think for us the chance is uh, still very good because uh, for Indonesia, I think compared to China, China is very, uh, very crowded. Hmm. Everyone want to <laughs> enter the uh, United States from China, right? All right. Mm -hmm. You're going to but for us, for I think one. we yeah. still have a good opportunity. All right, more on this, yeah. And if you look at our government relationship, I think Indonesia and United States building a very good relation so far.